Hello everyone, I'm Mr. Mokalover and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in which we are playing a new mod called the Thousand Week Reich, in which we are playing as a certain nation, a certain uh, nation under a certain type of dude named A.H. He's looking a little old, but custom game rules like we do at the start of every campaign, everything's just going to be set to default. I have no idea what's going to happen, I don't want to spoil anything. But let's just go ahead and start it. So, I'll be honest here. This is my very, very, very first campaign with the Thousand Week Reich. So, we have Swabian Knights, and I'll let you know what mods I'm using very soon. So, when Bismarck united the German peoples under one empire, most dreamt of a grand state that could surpass Napoleon, but only one man dared to put his dreams into action. The... <clears throat> The F dude, the Fuhrer, after the swift victory on the Western Front. All eyes turned to the Red Menace in the East, where Germany's fury fell upon the Bolsheviks in full force. Kiev, Minsk, Sevastopol crumbled under the German might. Meanwhile, the Soviets found themselves isolated, sitting alone as the world turned their back on them. Soon, Leningrad fell after combined assaults by the Luftwaffe, Kriegsmarine, and Wehrmacht. As an all out assault threatened Moscow, Stalin was forced to relocate his troops away from Stalingrad, opening the door for German intrusion into the Caucasus. Uh, Alcaucus's oil fields. Stalingrad too fell after an encirclement bled the city dry, and finally, after millions of deaths on both sides, the German flag flew above the Red Square. However, this victory was never official, as the Reds have relocated to Perm with Stalin going missing during the chaos in Moscow. And we want to hear more. The crisis of 48. After the end of major operations in the East, Germany enjoyed a period of stability and economic boom, but... This period was jeopardized in 48 when Mr. A. H. fell into a coma after suffering from a stroke. Wow, sounds like he has a tough job. A prominent general, Henning von Thresco, used this opportunity to seize power, declaring that Adolf uh, is dead, and von Thresco proclaimed himself Prime Minister of Germany and formed a new military cabinet. Loyalists, Waffen, SS, and military elements refused to recognize the von Thresco government. General von Manstein formed a League of Neutral Regions and Military Formations, which included the Reichskommissariats, just as all hell was about to break loose, though. The Führer recovered from his coma. Losing all legitimacy, von Thresco was arrested, then executed. While this crisis only lasted for a hundred days, its impacts were severe, ending the German economic boom and pushing Germany into stagnation. He shall be remembered like uh, the Yudes and Bolsheviks. Oh man, I can already tell this is not going to... I wonder if this is going to get monetized. You know what? I'll let you all know if this video can be monetized. This or the thumbnail. We'll see what happens. So, the status of the Reich. As we enter into a new year, we face new problems, and but some of the same problems as well. Not so subtle factionalism within the party. An economy in freefall, and a sluggish armed forces. All in all, 1952 has proven to be the worst year for the Reich in recent memory. Moving forward, it is clear that we must tackle these issues head on, as they are slowly killing our nation, and threatening to undo all the progress we have fought so hard to achieve. What we shall do whatever it takes, courting the upper crust of the party, regrettably bending the knee to the demands of these cursed industrial cartels, and executing careful political maneuvering within the Reichstag. We've shied away from being political or willing to get our hands dirty for a long time, and now we're faced with no other option. So, like the beginning of every campaign, we've got an army to deal with. So we've got some panzer divisions, we've got some SS divisions, uh, these are infantry divisions, which I'm actually going to leave out for now. Let's go ahead and pull these guys out. Let's have time to go on. It is January 1st, 1952, and like it said, we're not doing so well, but we do have five whole research slots. And like I said earlier, I have no idea what's even in this mod. Except I do know it's new, it's hot, and it's really cool. Civilian stuff? Sure, this is all new to me. The tutorial, huh? Synthetic resources, military stuff, we'll probably grab that. So, hello and welcome to the, the mod. A couple additional menus and mechanics are not present in vanilla. If this is your first time playing, well, what is the GDP... GDP. I'm getting flashbacks immediately to TNO, the last days of Europe. Uh, every nation assigned a GDP, a measure of economic size, which is based on a formula accounting for a country's civilian and military factories and resources. This is in arbitrary units to avoid issues of currency conversions and such. To view the GDP of the countries around the world, visit the menu, which can be accessed by clicking the button in the bottom right corner in the red box below the picture. Red box below the picture. Uh, visit the world GDP. Oh. Hello. Oh, that is a button there. Thanks. Okay, cool. What is this UN mechanic? So, this is menu can be accessed by clicking the UN emblem button in the top of the politics menu as indicated by the picture. So, we have picture. We come over here and we select, ah, UN screen. With this system, various resolutions are made during the game, often in response to spe specific events, such as wars. The permanent members of the Security Council can then vote for or against the resolution, or abstain with any vote being against counted as a veto, and the resolution not being passed. When Whenever a new resolution is brought to the UN, the menu will be open automatically, but it can be viewed at any time. Thank you very much. I'm ready to play. So, right now, our country's GDP. Why are we not first? Because America is. This reminds me a lot of EU4. Holy cow, these little shields. Holy cow, GDP value. Oh, that sucks for Laos and pa pa 
Palestine. Can you say that P word here? Palestine, huh? Cool. Uh, oh my god, we got nothing in production. Uh, Panzerschrecks. Yes, please. A wartime rifles. Yes, probably be good at least. Get some of those. Motorized. We'll probably need them for support companies. Mechanized. We already have some mechanized, I know. 1950s AP. APCs or mechanized? Which one should I use? Post war artillery. Uh, wait. Uh, which is different? 10, 6, 24. 18, 8. Uh, goodbye. Uh, anti we might use anti air, maybe, maybe not. We let's make sure we got plenty of guns. Support equipment, do that, do that. Uh, we gotta make sure we got some some tanks as well. Light SP artillery 3. IFVs. Uh, I'm probably gonna go with these. A lot of battle tanks, main battle tanks, that'll be good. Oh my goodness. Fighter and ooh, jet fighters. We do get some jet fighters, huh? Range is 1200 versus the range is 1200. 80 versus 72. Air superiority is 1. Oh my goodness. Well, hold on. Before we make a decision here, let's look at the. Oh my goodness. I, like I said, this is my first campaign, so uh, this is this reminds me so much of TNO. Holy cow. Interceptors, fighters, where's my jets? Heavy aircraft, tactical bombers, of course, air doctrines, helicopters, I'm not sure how to use those at all. Let's see, so jet engines. Um, you know what, who cares? Let's just choose what's tried and true, I suppose, for now. Let's go ahead and choose... Mm, 30, that's 28 production costs. We probably don't have a lot of... Well, we actually might have some fuel. That might not be bad. The max speed 720. I'm going to go off speed, which is 1,000, so we're going to use this one for now. Uh, we usually like close air support as well, right? Messer Schmitz, Wartime Fighters, Cast. Well, we're using Fighters, so we're just going to use this one as well. That'll be good. And it looks like we might have some carriers, so make some of that. What else we got? Interceptors. Oh, I don't want to use Interceptors this time. Messer Schmitz, Wartime Strat Bombers. We might need some Strat Bombers eventually. Uh, strat Bomber equipment. Is this Jet Strat Bombers? Yeah, it is. You know what? Just make it one. That's fine. Alright, so that being said, we're going to need probably a little bit more artillery on our guys. We're going to need more APCs, mechanized. We'll do that. Mechanize. Oh, well, think about this. APCs. They have 25 armor. Actually, how much organization do they have? They have some. Not sure really how much. Mechanized has 20 armor. Hmm. Well, we'll see. Let's go ahead and try to build ourselves up here first. Ah, uh, yes. Good, good, good. Wow, the economy isn't looking good then. If. Huh. You can only build so many of those things up. And let's look, look at this. Carrier hulls. Only level 1 carriers? Oh, why do you hurt me so? Why do you hurt me so? Mm, I'm not even going to bother with this stuff. Now, nah, cruisers. Is this a heavy cruiser? Yes, it is, which means I don't like it. That's keep. Okay, to keep. Level 1 stuff? No, we good, we good. Destroyers? You know what? I'll leave on destroyers for now. Corvettes, those are cool. Just not interested. Subs, subs. Get rid of these Garbo subs. Oh, long range. Oh, so, oh maybe we'll keep that. Uh, get rid of that. Let's see. Cruiser. I just want to have good cruiser hull. Why? Why is it? Eh, it's not great. Mm. I don't want to make garbage. At least some of these are really... Oh my goodness. I don't want to make garbage, but let's make some subs. Subs are always useful, right? Just deploy them here. Usually I do all this stuff off screen, but since this is my, little, my first campaign here with you guys and playing this, so I don't mind spending a little bit extra time so that we can learn kind of together. What we need to do? Uh, Panzer Grenade Division. IFVs. Oh, I, I never really cared for IFVs that much, honestly. Infantry. It's either use tried and true infantry or just tanks, in my mind. Maybe APCs. Convert these guys eventually to APCs. But we'll see what happens. Panzer Divisions. We gotta edit those two. Make two at a time. That'll be good enough. Let's let time go on. We spent a long enough, about eight minutes, nine minutes doing this already. So, at least we got some fuel. That's good. And it's very interesting to see that we have our political party stuff up here. I'm not used to that. So, Terrorist attack! A group of unknown Polish sheriffs have successfully damaged a military complex in the former Polish eastern regions of the German Reich. Under the cover of night, these terrorist scum use bombs to accomplish their tasks with military-like precision. It is suspected that the terrorist organization known as the Home Army is behind the latest attack. Scheiße, damn Poles! Uh, so, uh, let's read the greatest failure. Uh, after we do failing economy, let's do failing economy. So it's no secret that the economic situation of the Reich is sluggish, to be put it politely. To express it bluntly, though, the Reich's markets exist solely between Germany proper and the eastern territories, which, although bountiful in key natural resources, we that we otherwise struggled with during the war, has left us isolated in other areas of imports that exist outside these trade zones. Attempting even the smallest of trade offers with Rome has been met with stiff upper-lipped rebuttal, and with a similar scene transpiring when von Ribbentrop attempts 
such with Italy's client states. Along with the isolated trade community, production has lagged behind in various areas, contrib contributing to an overall slowdown in economic activity across the country, which has consequently led to falling prices and slowly raised unemployment, the first occurrence since the Weimar era. We mustn't sit on such a grave issue any longer. Many reforms must come to rem remedy this and return our economy to its normalcy as the steepest goal we must climb to reach. So the greatest failure. Future. The greatest future. The coup brought greater harm to the Reich than anyone one might have seen on the surface. It cost the Reich much of it in its way. The prestige that it got during the war and Germany's reputation on the market. Alongside the already existing economic issues, a coup offered the world an unsavory perspective into the true nature of German politics. Even in 52, there are no signs of recovery in Germany's near future. If no major actions are taken, the Reich is doomed to fall. If it appears the powers of the world are keeping close eye on us, waiting to tear us apart once, a slight crack appears in our mighty nation. Ein Tausend Jahre. Well, I don't know. The mod's called Ein Tausend... Oh crap, what is this in German? Volk? Volken? I don't remember week at well. Yeah, it's been a while since I've done stuff. So, Southern Poland Operation. Reserve Police Battalion 101, or Einhundert Eins, is organizing a massive operation to cleanse the still stubborn population of Southern Poland. The so called hunt seeks out to exterminate the remaining hidden Jews within the population while identifying Jewish sympathizers in the region. The main goal remains the main goal remains to bring order, uh, not not to have a failing economy, but to bring order and extermination to those who continue to defy the Reich. Get on working, boys! and Germany's economy. The economy has suffered greatly recently, and we have no choice but to pay close attention to the problems and begin with necessary reforms. This will be a difficult task, but our leader will get us through it. Reform is the only answer that can pull the Germans from the brink of total economic failure. Economy first. Uh, let's see. So we can do internal politics. What's over here? The unthinkable. Oh, no. We get Gobi. Gobi. We get Sperry. Voling. Bermann. And... Hmm. The Resistance. <laughs> All right, internal politics. Now we must focus on the politics of the interior. Mending the current situation we find ourselves in, dishing out necessary reforms, and stirring, above all things, business as usual. As well as other things, of course. Time is of the essence. We must toil diligently to maintain stability, lest we become distracted by even a smidgen. Then the wretched clause of degeneracy and Judeo-Bolshevism will poke and prod their way into our hallowed institutions. Many meetings will be arranged. For the first time in a while... And well, the Reichstag will be put to proper use, rather than an audience for long, rambling, and damn near sleep-inducing speeches. What do we have over here? How much political power do we get? 1.62. We have 58% stability. Ballman ruins it. And then war support. Okay, cool. We'll improve working conditions. Promises of peace. No, thank you. Aluminum plant in Leningrad. Oh, oh, we own that. Yeah, we do. And actually, we owned it down here, too. And what uh, Ostrakhan was actually known as Ostrachan. Ostrachan now. Oh, wow. We got all the way down here. Holy crap. Windestadt. That's really awesome. I like... Wow, we got all the way down to Iran. Oh, so we have the, we got fake news. There have been two waves of fabricated reports about our plans in Eastern Europe, and the Greater German Reich is preparing a new wave of news to prove the Reich's innocence to the world. Weekly stability plus one percent. Funk resigns, suffering from illnesses and not able to complete his role as economic minister. Funk has requested to retire from political affairs and live out the rest of his days in private. While the Führer expresses disapproval of such actions, he still accepted the request after considering Funk's service to the Reich. Hayler has been made the new minister, replacing Funk as minister of economics. In the meantime, Funk has returned to his hometown of Danskirchen. Danskehen. Danskehen. I'm sorry. I, I, my apologies. To live peacefully for the remainder of his life. Gone with an older generation. Oh, my goodness. National... Can I say that word? Uh, political power. Oh, 25%. Oh, my goodness. Oh, why do we lose construction speed? I just want to go... I just want fake news, man. Just fake news. Real evidence? Less stability. Less damage to garrisons. It's overseas testimony. Drilled by overseas agents. Uh, some of the refugees that escaped the occupied nations will make th statements about the greatness under German authority, and they'll say how much they regret leaving it. All right, well, fake news might sound like fun, but I don't know what's going to happen over here. Plus two, politics of the German Reich. Oh, what is going on? Please stop giving me all these events right now. The political situation of the Reich turns more volatile by the day. Death slowly keeps around the great leader and haunts him as a spectator or specter. Meanwhile, the factions within are forming within the uh, NSDAP. Rivalries between high-ranking officers threatening to boil over from scheming into violence. Thankfully, with Mr. Hitler still alive, the party remains united on the surface and still makes joint political decisions. But there's so little one man can do alone, even the Führer himself feels lost at times. Let us accomplish our goals while we can. And now we have an accessible operation, but first we shall do Ostreffen? Oh. The reforms? Handling the political situation business as usual. Uh, I kind of want to see what happens with SS rivalries, because there's a rivalry between Heydrich and the Resistance. And honestly, with this mod, things can go in so many different directions, I've heard, that not any one campaign should be similar, so I don't really know. I, I, at the time of this recording, I don't know a whole lot about this mod, but it's so interesting. 
I'm going to go with reforms. Let's see what happens. So the party has been the guiding principle of our society since the inception of our new German Reich. It has become highly or nigh monolithic in nature, revered by the ordinary citizens in the cities, and the hard-working, suit-covered coal miner in the rural. It has also been feared and hated by the most degenerate enemies of the Reich, but with age comes mileage and the wear and the tear is worn heavily on an SDAP. As such, the necessary reforms must be undertaken. The party has allowed itself to become bloated, which leads to inefficiency. We must trim the fat in places that have been allowed to gorge for too long, cut unneeded budgets, shrink some positions here and there, and modernize the bureaucracy. We spent two years at most promising in a most promising decade, but yet our party still lags behind. It's time to change that and quickly. So successful Artfall operation. Oh my goodness. Reserve Battalion Einhundert Eins has won a major victory in the regions of southern Poland. While they faced resistance, the Artfall was able to crush all our unrest and successfully dealt with thousands of Jews and Polish resistance sympathizers. This operation marks yet another brutal yet impressive achievement for the Artfall. Good work, Artfall. Well, there goes 5,200 people. Speer's meeting would be interesting. Uh, oh my goodness, that's a lot of political power. We have 143. Uh, oh my goodness. Speer? Hmm. Oh boy. Oh, how much did we get a day now? Over two? That's not bad. Uh, oh, uh, what is that? Is that the. It's actually a new order. No, it's a new order. Wait, the new order. I'm not playing that mod. <laughs> uh, let's see. Anything else here? Von Ribbentrop. Who was the guy? Was it Speer? I think it was, might have been Albert Speer that was supposed to lead for a while. Oh, that looks terrible. Emergency Council? Doesn't look like we can do anything there. What about over here? Krupp? Listen, research speed goes goes up. Technically, for us, we get better research. More artillery attack. Volkswagen. A Fabin? Oh, my goodness. Um, wow. 50% construction speed is nothing to laugh at, though. For anything? Holy cow. Um, This looks really good. If anything, I'll probably choose a construction company, because even though they take up stuff, that's still not bad. 25%? Oh, my goodness. I love I love mods that change up ministers and companies that you can use. I love it so much because I'm so used to the same old, same old, and having these guys, something new and different, and it's kind of a give and take here because you lose consumer factories, which I think is a great thing because yeah, everything has a cost. Everything has a cost. There's no such thing as a free lunch, usually. I'm going to go with this guy. It's only 2%, and we get 15% construction speed. Come on, the economy. we got to build, 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 build. So, Spiel's meeting. <clears throat> And during a typical afternoon, Speer paid a visit to the Berghof for a private meeting with Mr. Schmittler, without the presence of Martin Bowman. Uh-oh. While the chatter between Speer and Hitler in the garden mostly revolved around some dude, around architecture, Speer had raised his concerns on the German economy and made an informal report on his request or as his host as Minister of Armament. Speer subconsciously, oh my god, commented that the German economy is just a total wreck and seemingly didn't realize that what he just said. And dear Speer, the economy is in shambles. Oh, Speer's influence grows. Perhaps Speer is starting to forget his place. Oh, I don't know what this is going to do. I'm just going to say yes, it's not looking great. And stability looks nice. So, Egyptian martial law. Economic reform plans. If you'd like to read these events, I'll put them on both sides. Side. This guy's the president of Iceland, apparently. So, the Fierros assumed, uh, summoned all of the inner circles of the party to come up with plans to reform the economy. Goebbels, Goering, and Speer has suggested their respective plans for the economy. With Goebbels' people's plan, Goering's new four-year plan, and Speer's ideal plan, each proposals are detailed and unique in execution, but only factor that matters is if any of these plans caught the Fierros' attention. Let's see. Oh, what, uh, what can we use the political power on right now? Contractors? Oh, yeah, more contractors, that's fine. Um... We could use them. Is there anything, any other reason why we might want to keep them? Wow. Consumer goods minus 10%. Not bad. Eh, uh, Von Ribbentrop seems like he needs to get out of here. Uh, Martin Ballman. Hmm. Well, oh, hey, goodbye, old man. Martial law. Hmm. We have a highly industrialized economy, which is good. We also have a fanatical dictatorship, which we can't get rid of. So, French labor strike. Growing labor strikes occurring in the Western territories has led to a temporary industrial slowdown in our Western regions, while the local SS divisions were quickly put down. Uh, these attempts at striking, this shows yet another stubborn inferior race is refusing to accept Aryan rule. We have a god dang Franks. God dang it. God dang it. Dictatorship, authoritarian system, plus facade democracy, established democracy. Death of George VI. Oh, at age of 56. That's unfortunate, man. The king is dead. Long live the queen. Kleptocratic regime, huh? God dang, that's a lot of political parties. So, plans submitted. Oh, crap. I have to make a decision now. The three proposals made by the respective leaders are now being reviewed by the Führer himself, with the final decision only being his. Speer's plan details a plan in which various state projects and reforms would put Germany closer to the Aryan dream. Goebbels' people's plan aims to revamp the German economy in a more traditional military way. Lastly, Goring's four new four-year plan seeks to reform the entire system to bolster wealth and productivity. Um, I honestly have no idea which direction I want to go with. They all sound gr Hmm. Hmm. 
But let's see. Completes four year. Oh, hold on. Let's, let's, let's do a look at this. Four year plan. Where is all this stuff? Ah, the people's. Uh, so before we make a decision here, I love that we can burn the papers and something else might happen. But let's take a look. So the idealistic plan. Now let's go look at the people's plans. It's on the far left first. Military employment, agrarian reforms, more weekly stability, which is good. More multi-population is good. Conservative approach, huh? Empower the union. Or empower union. Outsourcing labor. Propaganda drive. Not bad. Mass productions. Looking okay. German reactor. Oh. Failure. 50% chance. Oh, no. Uh, the at atom bomb. Nuclear production. Warriors industry. Looks very good. How about the middle one? So we have the new four-year plan. The Reichsbank, which looks... Uh, looks so not great, but looks okay. The Reichsbank. Him and Gallring. Hmm. Interesting. The Reichsstandard. Partial privatization. Labor modernization. Benefit the conglomerates. Oh, I like that construction bonus. Central production hub. German engineering looks... Uh, and focused industry. Or we'll do the ideal plan. Project 1, the Vienna Project, which sounds promising. A lot more stability. Rocks Commissariat's quotas. Expand the colonial market, which I kind of like to see. Two projects. National oil reserve. That's not... 50 oil in Ostpreußen. Ooh! Hmm. Regional stockpiles. That looks really good as well. Reform the bureaucracy. And balanced industry. You know what? I'll be honest here. I'm going to play Germany on this channel probably multiple different times to try out different paths eventually. So for now, I think we're just going to go with something balanced. Well, I say balanced, but I'm just going to go with Speer, probably. Uh, and he says he wants to go towards more towards a Aryan dream. Uh, let's So we're not choosing this one. We're not choosing that one. We're definitely not choosing the uh, four... Four-year plan. There's definitely not that one. Gerbil's people's plan. How about idealistic? Let's try that. Why not? Project one sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, Ostreffen. Handling the political party situation. Well, we have to wait because the focus is not yet done. Wave the fake news. Um, let's try. It. Let's get more stability. So the fake media campaign. Latest edition of Das Reich. An entire article. Oh boy. Uh, worth of content in the newspaper was given to a special place, or piece. Written by an unknown author, a sizable article supported by pictures was published for the German public in which the author showed the lives of deported undesirables in one of the Reichskommissariats. This article made sure to be remind the re readers of the deportees' inferiority, but also ensured that these people are living an adequate life under German custody. Well, most readers often skip these boring sections, a few that care to look at this as a sign of relief, knowing that the German master race is doing their best to maintain purity in a humane way. But these pictures and names are a delusion crafted by Goebbels' men, with the truth being a pile of ashes in the depths of a mass. Grave. A success as always. And atomic testings, although we do not have the full capacity to produce atomic bombs yet. God dang it. Our science team has successfully created a prototype. Members of the government urge the fear to allow a show of force. Oh my goodness. Uh, done by a nuclear test in Moscow, but our scientists exclaim Schnikes. Polish, not Polish, Spanish, Moroccan conflict. I just want to read about nuclear testing, man. Okay, go and read about that. Oh my. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is I love all the, I love the lore. I love like all the news. Uh let's see, but our scientists claim that testing an atomic bomb at this current stage might create an unrealistic expectation and spark international attention on a project that Sony is polishing. Should we allow the testing? Test the prototype. Ooh, war sport. I'm just gonna go ahead and choose the next thing we can do before I start reading everything here. Business as usual. With the health of our fear deteriorating rapidly, we must decide to either keep his health and condition Parkinson's disease a secret or to release it to the public. This is a difficult decision for the high command, as not telling the public will leave them in dark, and when he does die, there'll be some people bound to attempt to find out why he died. However, this also can lead to plots to overthrow the fear while he is sick, though. But questions of reform. The German state has been run in the same way, without much reform. Some in the party are urging us to revisit the old systems, improve, improve laws, reforming power structures, and so on. However, the old guard and some of the most close confidants around Hitler are opposed to the idea, leaving, him, leaving the decision entirely within the hands of the fear himself. Allow the reforms... Germany tests an atomic bomb. You weren't supposed to tell people! That's okay. Okay. I'm on one speed. How many events are there gonna be? <laughs> oh my god. Kekkonen is here in Finland. Great. Cool. Uh, Germany is perfect. Unchange. You know what? I don't know if Speer is really a reformer here at all. But I'm just gonna say allow the reforms. Whatever. Polish plot crushed. During an attempted Polish terror attack, the Arpo successfully intercepted and arrested several terrorists, stopping a disaster in the making. While this is a victory for the stability in the Poland region, the war on terror... Oh, God. An effort to crush all resistance from the Polish race is far from over. The Good. The war on terror. Please, let's not bring that up now. Germany attests an atomic bomb. German Germans will march on. Oh, the reform stuff. Cool. Uh, von 
Wittinghoff died. So today the heroic general Wittinghoff has died. He was a key figure during the invasion of Poland and was a major commander during the invasion of Yugoslavia. After victory in the crusade against Bolshevism, he retired from military life. Unfortunately, he has recently died from his increasing illness in his home in Fronten, Bavaria. A safe funeral was held in Bavaria. Many high-ranking German officers will appear at event. Rest in peace. Death of Del Darlwanger. Uh, reports coming from the general government's Ortbot during a raid on the village. Oh my god. Uh, the Delvangar Brigade was ambushed by resistance fighters, a move that caught Delvangar and his brigade by total surprise. The brigade was bombarded by Polish artillery with their overall incompetence in combat. Delvangar and his brigade were utterly destroyed, all with, with all members present as the raid killed. Del Delvangar's corpse was found within a village hut, holding a bag of loot, seemingly refused to let go of his village goods. What an embarrassment. Huh. Oh, I don't even have an army yet. Or even have an address. How many more? Quizzing's call. <clears throat> Our allies in Norway have contacted Germania. Due to recent events, they are requesting great autonomy as promised by the Führer himself in the 1940s. While it might be time to finally allow through with their promises, Goebbels suggests that Germany should play along by pretending to allow Norwegian reforms to occur and then retake control when the time is right. He's a man of his word. Oh, stability and political power. I like that. <clears throat> They're Norwegian thought. Cool. Surprising. Very, very surprising. The Union State, huh? <clears throat> and of course, is it Quisling? Yes, it is. Party crisis, weekly stability, minus 2%, Jesus Christ. London exiles, well, good for you. Uh, let's see, yeah, I'll read this very soon. Reforms. Uh, has branches? Socialism for the youth, national socialism, the great debate. How about branches? Let's try that one. So, one of the biggest hospitals in the whole of Germany, the Theodor Morel Hospital, has been opened in Germania, named after the Führer's former personal doctor. With over 10 floors and an array of the latest medical technology that the Reich can offer, the Theodor Morel Hospital will become the backbone of health for the city of Germania. The opening ceremony was attended by multiple high ranking officials, including Albert Speer and Hermann Goring, a symbol of German welfare. Uh, I'm going to assume that we can do all these, so I'm just going to go blow through these if I can. Oh, the debate. With the allowance of the Führer himself, the party will now decide on which direction Germany should head towards the upcoming months. Let the debates begin. And national socialism for the youth? Why not? Algerian Republic declared one or in free state. The Algerian War. This looks like a mess. Then again, it is Africa, the die are cast. So, business as. Oh, shh. Nikes, what happened? Industrial focus. After rounds of debate, the majority of the party have uh, agreed that the industrial development will be the goal that can improve German lives. So, for 40 days, we get more cap and efficiency growth. Why is Morocco green? That looks really odd. <clears throat> Uh, let's read something else before we read that. So, Masters of the Youth. Why not? The Hitler Union is the largest, largest organization in the Reich, teaching discipline, a strong work, ec work ethic, and pride in one's nation, and a race for decades now. <clears throat> but alongside our party, the organization has been left mostly unchanged, which has led to various m maladies and typical of lacking modernization. Arthur Axman, the longtime leader of the Jugend, has recognized these problems and consulted with his predecessor, Baldur von Schirach, to discuss various reforms and budget reallocations to improve the functioning of the Jugend. As the party modernizes and reshapes itself, so must our oldest youth organization, so that our nation's children and future generations be instilled with the same values that kept our Reich strong and proud. Business as usual. <clears throat> Hitler's salt. Situation is largely unknown by the lower party members and the general population, but as his, serious his situation worsens more rapidly than our doctor's expectations, it raises ever greater concerns. Should we announce this horrible news to the public or retain the knowledge for our sake of the popular order? Business as usual, it's too late. Tell the world. Um. Business as usual. It seems like we're going to get penalized no matter what we do. It seems like. And I already know that, you know, Mr. H here, Mr. Schmidtler. He's going to die eventually anyways. I can tell the world that he's having problems, which will tell people to maybe strike at us. Business as usual. You know what? It's too late. Tell the world. Why not? I didn't need political power. Didn't need it. It's a tool of the, uh... Elites? Actually, what, what's my GDP like right now? Assassination of Helmut Bischoff. Reportedly attending a meeting with a fellow Schutzstaffel members in Frankfurt, Helmut Bischoff was killed by a car bomb rigged into his Volkswagen. 21 were killed, including himself. Himmler addressed the Schutzstaffel about recent events, calling these incidents as merely acts of terrorism by the subhumans. They didn't need political power, and I love this event. It does so much for us. Wow, our GDP is looking, looking like it. Really like it. How do I increase GDP? So, Heroes Day Memorial. For now, from the Atlantic to the Ural, Germany stands tall in the world. Our Germany, our fatherland, which 17 years ago was still shackled by the terms unjustly imposed upon him by the decadent West, today thrives in its rightful place on top of mankind, liberating from injustice brought upon us a new path of glory. With, and with the guidance of our Führer and our spirit of the Aryan Volk, we broke free from our foreign chains. Like a phoenix, our flame of rebirth swept the old order 
order, uh, or order away the flame that also lights a torch that her heralded a new glorious era, where all Germans may live free, unshackled, unburdened, but under the rule of the Fuhrer. All thanks to the brave, courageous sons of the Fatherland, triumphantly won after fighting all Jewish puppets free fr from California to Kathmandu. Uh, may Germany stand tall now and forevermore, except of Alfred's Ingemar Berndt's speech in Boxhalla, the hero's memories must live on. For now, the people shall celebrate political power and more stability for 30 days. Cool. Now, Britain tests an atomic bomb. Oh, the Anglos have nukes. Oh, well, very good. And we have another event. Cool. German PS. Dot 440. Dot T. I wonder what that does. And actually, I should probably organize my army a little better than this. But then again, we've had so many events and so many things like that, it's been a little bit redonkulous, to say the least. Cool. I have not read what's on screen. Gulag revolts. Post Soviet Siberia. If you want to read about that, go right ahead. I, we gotta. I'm already half an hour into this video and I haven't even organized these guys up yet. But, oh, the Wehrmacht sympathizer. Von Klug. Oh, I always like choosing Von Klug to lead. Oh, yeah. I always, I always use that one. Infantry. That's all right. Only near the end of the video do I do this. It's a Mangle? What? Uh, Josef Mangle has been found dead within his office shot dead by a single bullet into the heart. Police and security services both claim that such murders by a resistance fighter would be impossible due to the building being heavily guarded and no reports of suspicious entries. Entries were reported by the skilled guards. Reinhard Heydrich has phoned Germania from Gotland, suggesting that the timing of these incidents were targeting the Schutzstaffel, planned by some sort of higher being within the party. What is going on? Well, sorry, son, but you can't know about that because Streng Geheim. The Lebensraum. Oh, we gotta talk about Lebensraum. Let's do Project 1 first. The first raids of the ideal plan, Project 1, relates to the aforementioned encouragement of the other metropolitan, metropolitan growth near the cities, the implementation of industrial and perhaps agricultural quotas for the Eastern Reich's commissariats, and the vast expansion of the Reich's colonial market, a long untapped aspect of our economy. But I do want to know your guys' opinions for this campaign. Now, we will have rivalries between Heydrich and Himmler. What do you think, or who do you think should we favor? Should we favor Heydrich or Himmler? Now, me personally, I think we should do Heydrich just because I played as Heydrich's Germany in TNO, so I kind of want to see him keep going on. But let me know. Who should we choose? Heydrich or Himmler? But I think we're going to pretty much end today's episode here. Uh, we pretty much only got to March because there's so many events, but over the course of this campaign, oh god, Barry is dead. Uh, I'm going to make these videos a little longer, longer, and longer, just like what I do with. Uh, TNO with the last days of Europe, so Democrats in West Africa, very good, very good, very good. And I just realized that Leningrad is now called, well, not St. Petersburg, but Adolfsburg. Go figure, but regardless, uh, I shall read this last, and then we shall end the episode. Karl Gephardt Incident. On the outskirts of Germania, while Karl Gephardt was driving to make a formal report about the recent situations to Minister Ma Martin Bowman, some unknown factors caused the death of Karl Gephardt. His driver was shot, or was dead by the time the police arrived, and Gephardt's body showed signs of struggle between, for death, with the cause of death being five shots into the stomach. All state ministries are now alerted to the ongoing possible conspiracy, and Albert Schubert is urging the fair to hold out within the bunker. Crap. But anyways, regardless... Thank you very much for watching. If you liked today's video, consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And let me know, what should I know about the Thousand Week Reich mod and things that could happen? I love reading your comments. Regardless, thank you very much for, thank you very much for watching and have a great rest of your day.